Welcome back. In this segment, we'll be talking on the importance of using an environmental friendly kerosene, to be specific, biofuel. Oh, my name is Joshua Nampu. Mm -hmm. I'm the technical manager mm -hmm. in the programs department of Net Fund. Mm -hmm. um, programs department is basically where we do, we oversee all the programs of uh, the organization, mm -hmm. that uh, the, the various things that we do. Uh, the technical aspects, mm -hmm. uh, all the, um, the collection of data, the M&E, mm -hmm. all those things that have to do with projects okay. is done in the programs department. What is renewable energy? Renewable energy, and I think that is, yes, as you rightly point out, that's one of our mandates, mm -hmm. to push the agenda for green energy, mm -hmm. renewable energy. Mm -hmm. Renewable energy simply means any energy that is sourced from renewable sources. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds almost like... Uh, I'm using the same words to describe mm. the same thing, mm. but renewable sources are uh, this, the ones that can be replenished by the normal, normal occurrences of nature, mm. uh, like solar, like mm. wind energy. Mm. So any energy that is sourced from those sources mm. then is renewable, okay. as compared to the fossil fuels like oil, mm. which is uh, depleting, mm. and then which has uh, what you would call a detrimental effect on the environment. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, <coughs> do we say or do we categorize wind, solar and geothermal as renewable energy? Yes, okay. we categorize them as renewable energy mm -hmm. uh, and green for that matter because the earth keeps replenishing them. Mm -hmm. Of course not at the rate as which, at which it is being used because everything has to come to an end sometime yeah, yeah. and everything can be depleted. Mm -hmm. But this, this keeps replenishing themselves like you never run out of sunlight and the sun has never refused to appear in one of the days. Mm -hmm. So that is a more sustainable way of sourcing our energy. And talking of energy efficiency, why is energy efficiency important, especially here in Kenya? Energy efficiency is uh, important because it is part of the things that drive, energy drives manufacturing. Okay. Manufacturing drives, supposed to drive the economy. Mm -hmm. So every, every the, and use of energy, of course, is, there's a huge demand for energy mm -hmm. because of population increase. There's mm -hmm. simply not enough energy for anyone. So the more that we are efficient in using it, then the more we can achieve more. Mm -hmm. The more our development can can be accomplished without uh, necessarily depleting our energy sources. Mm -hmm. So efficiency is very important. It's a, it's a very critical thing. Mm -hmm. and, and every time when um, you, you think about the wastefulness that we have around, or if, uh, for example, let me give you a simple example, if street lights were left on during the day, yeah. that obviously is uh, wastefulness, and it's not efficient, mm -hmm. and it, it just means that we are going to be depleting our energy sources yeah. faster than then we can replenish them. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of uh, energy efficiency or energy technologies can Kenyans uh, familiarize themselves with? Oh well, the Kenyan market is uh, very robust. Uh, Kenya being um, an economic powerhouse in East Africa, mm -hmm. there's, been, there's been a lot of innovation and we have seen a lot of uh, cook stoves, for example, are mentioned at the, the very lowest uh, minimum. There's been a lot of innovation on cook stoves, mm -hmm. uh, just uh, because it is, it is one of the things that mm -hmm. could really assist households. Mm -hmm. When we look at uh, the population of Kenya, we realize that majority of the people are yeah. poor. Yeah. And uh, they use very rudimentary uh, implements for cooking. So one of the things that would really make a difference is cook stoves which are renewable. Mm -hmm. <coughs> the other thing of course that has been has gained a lot of traction is use solar for lighting. Mm -hmm. uh, those are those kind of uh, energy sources have, uh, have gained a lot of traction in the market. Mm -hmm. The other one of course is to do with government and is geothermal. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of our energy source right now coming from geothermal mm -hmm. which is a very good thing for the country. Mm -hmm. I think in about 2014 we saw geothermal overtake hydro as the main um, supplier to the national grid in terms mm -hmm. of energy, mm -hmm. although now that, is, that has changed a bit. Mm -hmm. But that, that's, that's a, I think that's a pointer to the direction in which we are heading mm -hmm. with the government taking the lead. You've talked of uh, benefits of uh, renewable energy and uh, maybe if you can shed more light on these benefits and break it down to Kenyans. I think the, the very first thing I would say is that um, 
when you use clean energy, clean here means that it doesn't have a detrimental effect in term, to the environment in terms of emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, we, ha we all know about the greenhouse uh, gases, mm -hmm. uh, CO2, mm -hmm. and uh, we have all been talking about how uh, it has uh, damaged the ozone layer. Mm -hmm. uh, so the advantage of using the other uh, energy sources would be that they do not, um, do not cause the harm to the environment, mm -hmm. and that is the biggest benefit, the emissions level. Uh, in Kenya is uh, Kenya and Africa. I don't think are, you know, emitting as much as um, the developed nations. Mm -hmm. uh, but still, if we continue with the development model that we have seen in the West, yeah. we will get there very, very fast. But if if you can ask, uh, you've mentioned of other sources of renewable energy such as uh, wind. Why is it that it's not everyone who is using this renewable energy? I think one of the things. Um, that would be well stopping Kenyans from using this is probably the cost. Still, you may find that it is more; it's quite a bit uh, costly to get these systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the other, I think, major thing, if you think about the solar systems, is the um, technologies. The technology is, is still defective. You would have to keep calling the technician over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I think they have not really gained traction. Mm -hmm. if, if I was using LPG mm -hmm. gas, it would be easier to go switch on the gas. I may wake up one day, switch on the solar system, and it's not working. Mm -hmm. And I think going forward, you know, there's a lot of refinement. As people continue concentrating on this um, energy, there's a big, the, the cost is soon coming down. And uh, it will just a matter of time before they are adopted. Mm -hmm. Again, I think there's also lack of awareness. Okay. Uh, Kenyans are not very well known in adopting the yeah. measures to protect the environment. Mm -hmm. Or even if we do, it is a lot of lip service and we do not actually take measures. Mm -hmm. uh, so people are not, have not really um, embraced mm -hmm. and understood the need to go green. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, maybe just uh, as we wind up, how can Kenyans in my community and your community promote renewable energy? Well, I, I would uh, think that that starts with you and me. Mm -hmm. That you, if you adopt, if yourself are thinking that when I'm building a house, if I'm going to live in a house, I want to promote uh, clean energy. Mm -hmm. I'm aware of the consequences. I'm aware of the need for us to go green. Mm -hmm. Then I myself must adopt in all my, in everything that I do, in my lifestyle. So I think it's more of um, person to person. The government has, has played a great role in uh, trying to sensitize people. Mm -hmm. I think there's been a lot of uh, things in the media talking about the environment. Yeah. But I think uh, it starts with a personal effort of every Kenyan mm -hmm. and every community to start now talking, I mean, mainstreaming and actually living. We've talked enough, I think it's yeah. time now to live it. <laughs> People have got to simply live it. I think we saw the, the ban, on, ban on plastic bags. And I think mm -hmm. that was a good thing mm -hmm. environmentally. And uh, people have embraced it and it's mm -hmm. possible to do these things. So it is a matter of uh, people taking the initiative mm -hmm. in their personal lives and, and embracing the technologies that are there. Uh, is it possible to power the whole world with renewable energy? Why not? I, I, I don't know. I, maybe that would be a very technical issue to, uh, question to answer, but in my thinking and in my dreams, I think it's possible. I think it's quite possible. We can all go solar. We can all harness the power of uh, wind. Mm -hmm. Those things are available to us. We have, if we think uh, right now in the developed nations, mm -hmm. we're talking about 2018, all some, some of the EU countries have to have electric cars on the road. Mm -hmm. So they're going to simply phase out the cars which are driven by petrol. Mm -hmm. And they have taken a very bold step. So the world, as we, uh, 10 years from now, will not be the same world we knew. And uh, it is just a matter of um, time before things completely take a change. So I, I, I dream that it is possible. Okay. I dream that uh, the there'll be a lot of pioneers in that area mm -hmm. and believe that it is, it's going to be done. And finally, uh, can emerging economies leapfrog a baby from wood and dung to renewable energy? Nothing stops us from doing that, by the way. Because right now, mm -hmm. as we speak, and uh, Netfund being a supporter of uh, innovations, yeah. 
There's nothing that says that we must follow the beaten path of the, the developed countries. Yeah. Nothing says that we must go that route mm -hmm. because we are very innovative. Uh, we can choose to really go the green path now. But it's a hard choice. It, it means we don't copy a lot of what they did and we become innovative and creative in the way we want to develop. It means we chart a different development path. And I think the government has taken the lead in that. We have got a framework on uh, the development of the green economy. Mm -hmm. And I think it accepted that this is the way that we must go. So it is doable, but it takes a lot of will, mm -hmm. a lot of political will, and a lot of the will to implement this mm -hmm. and get it really to the grassroots. Well, that's all we had for you today in this episode. And as I've always said, if you want to make an impact, find your broom. Until next time, my name is Anne Mesharik.